there all happy Thursday thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends my name is Alyssa Thomas from penguin and fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners and I'm here every weeknight at 8 30 uh, p.m. Central Time Monday through Friday and it's a time that we can relax and craft together so this month for me is about wrapping up all these little projects that I've had around I got my letter T done on my shirt uh, we finished the swan zipper pouch last night fixing that and a couple other projects we are just finishing up and it feels so good uh, one of the projects I've had sitting here for years is uh, I have this sweater that my mom knit and uh, it fits kind of weird. Uh, no one's ever really worn it. You know, you follow a pattern and then, you know, it turns out or it doesn't, I suppose. But I'm wanting to cut right up the middle of it um, and turn it into a cardigan. So apparently I found out <laughs> this week that that is called steaking or making a steak. I'm not quite sure <laughs> quite how to use the term, uh, but the act of cutting into a knit and then like tying it off basically is an act of steaking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I did some research on it today on how to do it and it seems pretty straightforward, uh, better than I thought. It's going to involve some hand stitching with some other wool. And I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a relaxing little hand stitching project uh, from, from a knit project. And we're going to get another project done. So, all right, that's the plan tonight. Let's get going. Okay, so here is my mom's gorgeous sweater. So tons and tons of work has been put into this. Like, look at all of this cabling. I mean, obviously, this was a pattern to, like, practice cabling. Like, it's a cable um sampler almost there's you know two different ones here we got like that seed sort of stitch on the side you know we got these little guys on the, on the front so anyway it is it is just so pretty but it fits really awkwardly um it's just kind of tight in the middle and you can see it even kind of tapers tapers here so my plan is to cut right up the middle uh, but for steaking, so that's, that's what we're talking about, cutting right up the middle, because I want to turn it into a cardigan. Uh, people have been saying, make sure to sew down the sides and, and all that first, and uh, they've thrown out this word, steak. I've never heard of that before, so I went into Google land today and uh, um, learned about it. So basically, t you can do it with machine, but actually hand stitching seems to be the preferred method and what we're going to do is we're going to hand stitch a back stitch um, on both sides of the middle and I think I actually might do two two lines on either side of the middle and then once you get that done you cut it right up and it doesn't even seem like you need to do anything after that so you can cover it um, you can roll the hem in and uh, um, sew it shut you can in theory add more stitches onto it but technically, I think all you have to do is do those two seams, and that's it. Uh, as, as long as you have something that will eventually felt. So this is 100% wool. Uh, this is also wool. I didn't have any white uh, yarn. Wool, like 100% not, you know, not that super wash, just like an actual wool that will felt, uh, meaning like it'll, it'll get smaller and... Uh, the fibers will stick together, basically. Uh, it works best sticking, apparently, with, with that. So we're going to give that a try. I'm going to just get started here. So this, this has a pretty clear center. Uh, I'm going to get down here a little bit so you can see a little bit more, you guys. But uh, So this has a pretty clear center. Hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, ah, sorry. OK. There we go. <laughs> But it has a, a, a good center with the cable. So I think, really, if I'm going to do two lines on each side, and I think it's going to be really pretty with this red, if I'm going to do two lines on each side, uh, I can go in the edge of the cable and then like one stitch in, and that should do it. So I don't even think I need to draw anything on here. I think I can just get started. So uh, we're going to do a back stitch. 
Gosh, I probably want the thread to go the entire distance though, don't I? I think so. I'd actually like it to go all the way up and all the way back down. So let's let's get some thread here. The thread, I've been saying the word thread a lot lately. So this is just, this is some wool yarn. I'm gonna get like twice the height. I'm actually gonna go one more. I mean, this is a crazy amount of thread to be using all at once, but I think it makes sense to go all the way up and down. Oh, Justin says, wow, I thought last night's project was courageous, pretty tame compared to this. Uh, yes, so I have never done this before. I literally learned the term uh, steaking um, like two days ago. I'm not, I'm not planning on felting it because that would shrink this down a lot, but um, so I'm not planning on felting it, Kimberly. I'm just saying um, from what I was reading that it works best, this process, with items that felt a little bit. Like, so after I stitch this and I cut it open, I'm going to have, like, that exposed edge, and that will just, by the act of, like, wearing it, I, I think will kind of eventually, um, eventually felt itself and I'm not positive I'm gonna I'm not positive I'm going to just like keep it un, undone I might actually cover this up with with like fabric or something like a bias tape or something if I get nervous about it okay I don't think this is quite the right needle let's see what else do I got I want a needle with a really big eye there this one this one will do this is an intense needle right here uh, but I think it'll work actually isn't really a bigger eye but oh yeah it is it's just a fatter eye this this feels more comfortable okay so I have a lot of thread a lot of yarn here probably way more than I need but I do kind of want to go up and down you're planning to leave the red thread in oh yeah that's why it's gonna look pretty so yes so I am planning to leave this red thread in um, I know this uh, this maybe this is a disaster I don't know <laughs> I, I read a few articles and uh, it just basically said to backstitch your way up. And uh, one of the articles I read said, uh, um, you really only have to do like one strand, but they mentioned that if you, if you are switching colors a lot, like if you're doing like a fair aisle knit or something, then you may want to do two because the colors are switching. So I'm kind of thinking the same thing because it's all this this cable. Um, Tracy, I'm not sure if I'm gonna add buttons yet. Like originally I was just gonna chop it down the center and then sew a bias uh, or like a, a bias strip on. But then everyone got talking about steaking and make sure you sew it and all that. And I'm like, what the heck is steaking? So um, now after some research, we're kind of going that direction. So basically, did you read about using the metal rods that typically go through the stitches top to bottom? I did not, Kimberly, so we're apparently probably not doing this in the easiest or, or best way. I am, I'm literally just going to sew two lines up and down both sides, and we're going to cut in the middle. It, at, at worst, it'll just take us a long time to stitch, and I'll cover it with some fabric anyway. So that, that'll be at worst. At best, it's fine like this, and it can just stay as is. So we may or may not see this red when we're done. Who knows? But I'm, I'm pretty confident that with this stitching, it's just not going to all like immediately fall apart when I, when I cut it. <laughs> Kimberly's like, I'm gonna go make popcorn. We're gonna watch this disaster, disaster through. And I'm just realizing now that I'm doing a back stitch, and uh, which is what what I've read to do, and that it's gonna take a whole lot more thread that I have here. So um, this might get me to the top. So I will have to get another one for coming back down. I was hoping to uh, only have to do one thread to go up and then down because then I wouldn't have to tuck in the ends up at the top. But whatever. It's fine. In my head, it, it was like a running stitch where I'd go up and down, but back stitch takes a lot, a lot more. Oh, hey, Mars. Uh, oh, it's 
Oh man, it's Marcia or Marcia. No, <laughs> sorry. I know we, we talked about this. Oh, you're gonna have to tell me again. I know, I know we, we <laughs> I got the pronunciation, but that was, a, that was a while ago. Oh, you say I'm doing a silent Silent death looking at all these cables. I, isn't this just like, there's so many cables. I cannot believe that uh, my mom did this. <laughs> hey, Rock and Robin. So yeah, so tonight, you guys, if you're just popping in, we are steaking, um, which is something I just learned about. And apparently there's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, the way we're doing it is, oh, <laughs> Teresa says I've, I've grown away from knitting, but I've heard steaking requires a glass of wine for confidence, lol. Yeah, when I was reading about it, I'm like, okay, <laughs> but we're doing it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Um, at, at, like I said, at worst, it wants to fall apart right away, which it's not gonna, and I have to cover it up with um, some bias tape, which is what I was intending to do. Anyway, the worst is the worst thing that could happen is I, I don't do this and this just sits around even longer. So that's that's even worse. I mean, look how cute this is already with just this little little red stitching here. So I would love, you know, so the art, a couple articles I read both seem to think that I didn't really need to do much after I cut this, which seems crazy. Like I would think that you'd have to like cover it up or clean up the edge or something, but they said you can stitch around it or whatever, but like it didn't seem like they were that worried about anything falling apart after you do this process. So I don't know, I'm going on other people's confidence here. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna, I'm getting close to my tail, so I'm just gonna give myself more slack, but I'm really kind of happy with this red. So uh, Haley's asking, what is steaking? I just learned about it uh, like two days ago. It is when, and this definition is probably not gonna be great, but it is when you cut into a knit fabric. Basically uh, the reasoning for like, why do steaking besides like what I'm doing, I'm, I'm turning a sweater into a cardigan. Uh, the, the thought process is that sometimes it is easier to knit in the round. So like, let's say if I wanted to make a big flat thing that's knit, sometimes, um, apparently, instead of going back and forth, it's easier to knit in a tube because your tension is a little bit better. It, it's more consistent. Uh, and I guess apparently, especially if you're doing like some fair aisle knitting, which is when you change colors a lot and, and make a a pattern and stuff. Uh, apparently, you know, knitting in a tube sometimes is better for tension. Uh, so then you can just cut down that tube and then you got a big flat surface. So that's one one reason one would steak their, their piece. Another reason is like if you wanted to do like pockets or something, you could just kind of knit your thing and I could just, I could just like cut into this or like cut into this to do pockets. Uh, th that was another thing that I saw. Um, so any anytime you like kind of want an opening, but you don't want to deal with changing tension or um, you know whatever other reason to make making just like a tube easier. Uh, even like a cardigan. If you wanted to do a cardigan, um, you'd th theoretically, if it's opening, you'd have to go like back and forth. So you'd have to knit and then purl and knit and purl and knit and purl or whatever, right? Uh, so let's say your tension your, is not as good purling as it is knitting. So uh, you'd have to go, so um, an option would be to knit the whole sweater in a round, kind of like what this is, and then cut to do steek, do, do the cut cutting to make the cardigan. So that's kind of what we're doing. This is gonna take a long time. So I'm gonna be here for sure tomorrow doing this and maybe a little bit next week. Um, 
So, um, no, I'm just going to cut the one side, but both sides will be stitched. And now I'm kind of questioning, should I do two lines? I think I have to, just because I need to, like, I need to, like, lock in these cables. If this was just knit all the way up, like, you know, just, just flat stocking neck stitch. Yeah, that's when it's just, like, all the flat knit stitch, right? Um, if it was just that going all the way up, I think I would only need to do one, one row. But the recommendation, at least for the color, was to do more than one row just because then it like holds in on the back all the colors. And I'm thinking cabling is probably the same. Yeah, exactly. So Kimberly says if you knit in the round, you get the stocking neck stitch only by knitting versus if you go if you're just doing something flat to get that pretty flat like stocking neck stitch you need to go knit pearl knit pearl but if you're in the round like just going around all you have to do is keep knitting around and around and around which is way easier because um, then you can just knit and don't have to don't have to pearl <laughs> John's singing in the, in the room I don't know if you can hear him jamming in his headphones. Oh, Renee Hardy from Dallas, Texas. Oh, I've read I read some some about steaking, but we'll, but never tried it. Yeah, I I was talking about this project um, earlier this week that it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while and I'm like, "Hey, I'll just cut down the middle and uh, sew up both sides or whatever." And everyone was like, "Oh, you're you're steaking. Steaking." And I'm like, "What? I don't know what that is." <laughs> <laughs> so, and then they were trying to explain it, like, uh, you sew both sides, uh, um, and all that, and then cut, make sure you sew it before you cut, and, and so I'm like, I, I gotta look that up, I've never heard that term before, and I've been crafting a long time in the, you know, yarn and fabric and thread and all that realm, I'm like in that industry, and have literally never heard that term ever. <laughs> So that's always a surprise, like when I hear hear something in those realms that I just that I've never heard before. Now, granted, I don't do well. I, I knit, but I always I'm not like designing patterns and stuff. Like I I always want a pattern by me when I'm doing it and um, that sort of thing. But I, I do love knitting. But it's, I've knit enough to like think I would have heard this term but I haven't knit a sweater before so you know maybe if I got into sweater knitting I would have probably heard of it really quick yep so Sharon I'm for sure gonna do two lines I'm gonna do one on each I'm absolutely for sure gonna do one on this side as well um, that will cut up the middle but I think I might actually do two on each side just to make sure I'm securing these cables so if it was just simple stocking net, stri um, stocking net, stocking, oh my God, stocking net. I can't say that now. But uh, if it's just that stitch going all the way up, I probably wouldn't have needed to do that. Yes. So Maria is saying, or Maria is saying, usually when knitting in the round to steek, they put extra stitches that will be the ones that you cut exactly so you don't destroy specific patterns yes so if I was um, stitching this and if I was knitting this like if I just picked this pattern up and did it now there's no way I would have done this cabling if I knew I was gonna turn it into a cardigan I would not have done that cabling down the center uh, yes yeah, so from what I was reading like what Marie is saying um, with steaking, uh, typically you would just do the stocking at net stitch. I literally can't say that anymore. But you would do that in the area that you already know you want to steak. So that makes it easier. And it, it's a visual too. Like if you're doing, you know, an intricate pattern, then that just plain stocking net stitch right there, like a couple rows, you know, okay, that's, that's my line that I'm going to cut. So this, so it's unfortunate in this case that I have this big cable here, and because of that, I'm going to have to stitch 
a second line on, on both sides. So I'll have four lines total. Yeah, so four lines total of this red, and I'm kind of hoping I don't need to do anything else than that. I'm kind of hoping this red holds it all together and I don't have to seal it or like, not seal it, but like put, you know, stitch an edging onto it or something to protect it. So like ribbon or, or um, uh, I was gonna put a bias strip on it or bias tape along the edge, like fold it along the edge. I actually do think that'd look cute still, but I'm kind of hoping that this just does the job. I'd almost like to test it. And I think this little red is gonna be pretty. So you do want to use a similar thread. I'm using wool. It did say that you could use a smaller size, and this, this happens to be a smaller size thread too. So, so far so good. It's just this bright red. And I'm trying to go in like every stitch going up, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing that completely right. Toasty though, this will be a great little house sweater. Uh, Haley Bug is asking, is there a pattern for the sweater? Those cables are so pretty. I know, aren't these just fabulous? Um, well, my mom knit this probably two decades ago. <laughs> Honestly, like it had to be at least it had to be two decades. I'm pretty sure it definitely wasn't in the last decade. Um, and it, it's just been sitting around because it just doesn't it just fits a little funny and uh, I don't know I acquired it at some point and uh, um, it's just been sitting around here so uh, I'm sure there's a pattern she might have all those patterns yet I'll, I'll have to ask her but for sure it's a 20 year old pattern at least and apparently it could use some help too because it's, it's pretty tight. I did actually try this on and I, I took some video of it so I will uh, when we're done with all of this I will post post like a before and after but it like the collar is kind of big and awkward and then it gets just like tight in the waist and um, so there's a few I mean but like the cabling is so cool though and it like it's just such a waste that it's not being used because it is just so pretty all the cabling I, I mean I can't imagine putting the time into this project this is like an intense amount of knitting and it's like <laughs> the horrible kind of knitting I mean that, that, which is obviously my own opinion but like doing all these cables I mean you gotta like pay attention all the time and you gotta like just like okay move these stitches over here and put these stitches on a on a um, placeholder and all that oh god this much that's so much work I like the kind of knitting where you can just zone out and just just you know knit to the end of the row and then you're good to go so I mean, not only would a big project like this take forever, but it's highly like in depth knitting. We're getting there. We're almost to the collar. So I do, I do want to. Um, we'll do two rows. I'll do two rows up this side first, and then we'll do the two rows on the other side. So hopefully, I don't know. Maybe we can get. Maybe we can get one side done today and one side done tomorrow, and then we can cut it tomorrow too. The cutting, that's the fast part. I am also going on the confidence of this blog post that I read. I read a few blog posts, but one person said that like, hey, the first time you do steaking, you you go real slow and 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 you're you're nervous about everything. The second time you you know, you're a little bit faster, and then the third time you just, you just chill. You got your wine on, and you cut. You're like wine in your glass in your hand, and then you just like cut right down and don't even think about it. So, <laughs> I'm going on the idea of like, oh, this seems scarier than it is. <laughs> I don't know. 
But yeah, if it wasn't for this cabling right down the middle, I probably wouldn't have to do the two rows. But I think the two rows are actually going to be really pretty with this red. Yeah, Sharon said I could have sewn with the sewing machine. I, I could have, but then when I saw that someone was like, oh, you can hand stitch it and it's, you know, just like a pretty back stitch. I'm like, oh, maybe I want to do a back stitch. That'd be fun. So I think uh, once I heard you could kind of hand do it and it didn't seem like it would take ages and ages, then I just was like, eh, I want to hand do it instead of this, instead of the sewing machine. But yeah, I, I thought about doing it with the machine. It definitely would have, we would be done already probably. Yeah, maybe not. I'm sure that, that has its own problems. Um, but gosh, I hope I'm actually grabbing the cables when I do this. I'll have to check the back and be extra careful on, on row two, I guess. It's pretty though, this nice little red. Red spiel. And actually the cable, I mean, yes, it would be easier if it was just stocking that, that stitch. I still can't say it. Oh my God. Uh, but the cable is like just the right size where it's easy for me just to go in that last stitch and then I'll just go one stitch over using this stitch as a, this line as a guide. So it's not, if I had to do it on one of these, these, um, uh, basket weave areas that would be that'd be a lot harder to go in a straight line ideally it would have been like this nice little guy right there if he was right in the middle then it'd be easy peasy but I mean I suppose we didn't have to do this right down the center but I think it'd be this particular one would be weird we'd have to really exaggerate it I think and I plan on using this, like have this as a, as a house coat, like have it in the basement when I'm working on stuff and it's been coldy cold. So this would just be nice to have around to throw on. Oops. Oh, I love that. I love uh, knitting dish, dish cloths. They're so fast and relaxing and yeah, you can experiment with different stitches that you haven't done before. They're like the perfect little working piece that's actually usable. I, I love doing knitting dishcloths. I think we, we've actually done that on here before. And I, I will again, I'm, I'm kind of waiting until they're all torn up, and but they're still pretty good. All right, we're almost, almost there. And then just based on this, how much thread I have left, because I think I did about three times the length, um, I'll know kind of how much to get for the next row so I don't just have a ton. I think we'll do the same thing though. I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. Uh, Justin's asking, before you use a fabric to embroider on, do you wash, dry, and press it? I, I don't. I suppose it all depends on what you're stitching onto. So if you're stitching onto something that you know is going to shrink or get washed a lot, then it might be a good idea to, to wash, wash it first. Um, but nah, I don't, I don't do any of that. So the top of this one is a little goofy, like the, the, um, ooh, there we go. The edge expands a little bit here. I'm going to scoot you guys down again. Hopefully you're okay. There we go. Um, so the, the cable kind of opens up here a little bit. So actually once I get to here, I'll be going in like this little kind of pearl looking area. I think so like versus out that way. All right, we're almost there. So 
the one. So that took us about a half hour or so. All right, so now I'm going to go right up in the middle of this little middle area. Stitches are kind of big here. So I think the act two or also by doing a back stitch, I'm kind of stabbing the stitch in back. Like here on the front, it looks like nice little beady stitches, but at the at the back, I'm kind of, oh yeah, so at the back, it's almost like stitching into itself, uh, which is locking it in place even more. So it, it is going to have a hard time unraveling from these back stitches. So that's, that's, um, Promising. Oh, thanks, Larry. All right. Do I remember putting the new month for you? Mm -mm. Remind me what what that is. All right, so I'm going around this last little bit at the top. I think I'll even stab the thread in back for good measure. Okay, so there we go. First one done. I'm gonna just snip it with with an end, like a, a tail, so I can weave it in theoretically later. Could just weave it in now, couldn't I? Let's weave it in now. And I only have, oh, I have like a whole length left. So I probably only needed like twice of that to, to have enough. I am gonna weave this in right now, cause why not? Ooh, look how pretty it is on the back though. Yeah, it's looking, looking good all the way down there. Oh, the kit. So we do have, do I remember putting the new month for you? So we do have the new embroidery of the month up, the kits up on the website. Is that what you're talking about? So the new embroidery of the month is the penguin. So we'll be stitching the penguin um, uh, not next week, but the week after. So I'm excited for that. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to weave this back and forth um, three times, kind of my general weaving situation versus tying a knot. And again, because this is wool, it'll eventually all kind of felt together, I'm thinking. All right, and I think I'll just, I'll weave in the bottom edge too right away. I didn't think of that earlier. There, it's awfully pretty. I do, I do hope I can just kind of leave this here like this. So that's one. Let's um, let's weave in the bottom too. Oh, Rock and Robin, why don't you send me an email again, um, and uh, and uh, that'll be helpful. So email me at info at penguin and fish, and we'll get we'll get everything taken care of for sure. So tatting, so um, I know a lot of you might be coming from tatting. So we've been tatting lately. So tatting is, uh, it's like this lace. Um, and I did a video today of like a bunch of different things you can make out of it. So not just like snowflakes like this. Uh, and I've, I've done uh, um, this like little letter T is tatted. So it's a, basically a way to make lace and you do it with, um, you could do it with uh, a needle, but there's also shuttle tatting, and this is a shuttle, so I've been kind of uh, talking about that. So, but tonight here, so I do I do nightly lives, uh, so every every evening, and they're all just like crafty, fun lives, and we do all sorts of different crafts, like yarn and needle crafts and all that. And right now, I this month I'm kind of doing 
a pile of random projects um, that have been sitting around for a while. So what we're doing tonight is called steaking, <laughs> uh, which is a word I've never heard before. I love trying new things here too. I just love learning new stuff about all these crafts and trying new crafts. So tatting for me, um, which was, you know, again, all this, this kind of lace making, uh, tatting was, oh no, totally not off topic. That's fine. Um, but tatting was new to me. Like I, I did try it about 10 years ago. I did try it. Uh, like I had a, like a kit that I tried it with, but it was so confusing that I kind of just gave it up and it was like, it's still a mystery. And then a couple, like a month ago or so, we got talking about it in the lives. And I'm like, man, I think I still have that kit somewhere. And I got that out and just watched a pile of videos and then kind of figured it out from, from there. And uh, so this last month I've been like way enjoying tatting so much. And I've been doing some videos on it and just researching other, other people that tat and trying it out and learning. And that's, and I, I, my craft time is, is, in the evenings here with you guys. So <laughs> if I'm learning something, if I'm trying something out, then uh, then uh, I'm, I'm doing it with you guys here. So that's been tatting for the past uh, two months or so. <clears throat> and typically uh, I, um, I have, we, I do embroidery. So I have an embroidery company. We uh, make embroidery kits and patterns. Hmm. Uh, and we'll be doing that two weeks from now. So the third full week of every month, we work on the embroidery of the month. So we have a new release. Uh, this month is gonna be these cute little penguins uh, skiing and snowboarding. So we'll be stitching this uh, week three. So we have one more week of putzing around on all these unfinished projects. And this one is a, a sweater that my mom knit like 20 years ago that never really fit well. So I'm trying to turn it into a, a cardigan by this way called steaking, which is a word I just learned about like two days ago. <laughs> and uh, it's, you sew on either side of like the middle and then you cut right up this uh, right through the knit piece. So that's what we're gonna try. Okay, since I'm completely saying, since I am thinking of leaving the red yarn, would you consider turning the sweater inside out? Oh, and doing the second row from back, so there's sides like front and the back. Eh, I'm thinking it's not as consistent as I'd really like on the back. Um, so I think I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna do it from the front again like this, because I do like kind of what this looks like. However, since it is a cardigan, it's gonna be open and flared and stuff all the time. So I think, I think you'll get that thick look on the on the inside. I think this is fine. So, but what I'm considering now in my head is that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do two lines here. Oh, it is two lines. I, I was thinking, I was looking at this over here and like, this is the side, but no, right here is where I would go for the other side. So here and here. Okay, so never mind. I was confusing myself. I was thinking that this, the equivalent to this red line on the other side is right here, but it's not. The cables, the cables right here. So. So we're gonna do a stitch line here, um, but I'm gonna do two, uh, and we're gonna cut up the middle, but I, I want two of these lines on each side just to make sure I'm holding all these cables down. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go here next. So I am going right next to each other, which is what I thought at the beginning, but I just, like I said, I confused myself. So we'll go here, then we'll skip this middle one. That's where we're gonna cut. And then we'll go here and here. So four total. So, okay, I, I think I have my bearings now. I am going in this next lane here, this next stitch area. So I'm, I'm gonna leave my little tail to weave in later. Just right up the middle here, okay. I got it figured. Oh yeah, Nolene, um, Nolene saying I would have um, machine stitched. That, that was my original plan for sure. Uh, but then when I was researching it a little bit, oh, uh, KJ, uh, embroidery is so much fun. I, I, I like thinking of it like a coloring, like an adult coloring book sort of. Um, 
well, a normal color, coloring book, I suppose, where you just follow the line with some stitches and it's you can get as detailed or as, as simple as you want. And I just find that really, really fun. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so I, I talked about, or I, I initially thought I was going to machine stitch both of these or all these lines, but then I started researching it a little bit and was reading how people were doing it by hand. And I'm like, oh, that might be kind of fun. And, and they're having like some trouble here and there with the machine. And that's kind of what I was worried about last night, like stitching it with the machine, because just fitting it in the machine, like I'm not, I don't know, I suppose I could have gone from the bottom and gone all the way up. Just because, you know, this is a tube and I didn't know if I'd be able to get the fabric out of the way well enough to do, to use the machine and I don't know. Maybe I just wanted to do more hand stuff, I'm not sure. But when I was reading that, you know, you could do it by hand with the back stitch, I thought that sounded relaxing, so. Switched it up. So this is, a, this is not as easy as following just the edge like I did in this one, so that's why I did that first. So I'm just trying to be straight here, basically. Again, if I was starting this from scratch, knowing I was going to steek it, which is basically, again, cutting like a tube of knitting, um, just like fixing that end or the edge before cutting. If I would have known I was going to do it, I would have done it that way, like what we were talking about earlier, where I would have left an area with just stocking net stitch, stocking, stocking net, stocking net, stocking net. My God, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't say that word anymore, but like I would have done that stitch <laughs> uh, where I knew I was going to cut and then it would have been easier to sew in. I have to do two lines here just to make sure I'm catching all these cable stitches. I think we're going to be fine. And like I said, at the worst, I will just cover it up quick with some fabric and like we'll sew a fabric edging onto it. I don't think it's going to immediately just explode on me um, by cutting it, so I think we're, we'll be good. But ideally, eh, maybe not ideally, I, I think I'd still like the idea of putting a fabric edge, but theoretically, I'm, I'm hoping I could just leave these, you know, it'll be four rows of stitches with the cut up the middle, and I don't even think I have to finish the cut. Stock and net, stock and net stitch. Yeah, Amy says might might help to see it type. Stock and net stitch, stock and net stitch. Does that, am I saying that weird? It sounds weird in my mouth. Um, maybe I'm always putting a G in like stocking net, stocking net, stock and net stitch. I don't know what I'm doing. Feels weird when I say it and it didn't feel weird earlier. <laughs> Oh, Pete Perrin is, still, is saying it. Um, stocking net, yeah. Stocking net stitch. I don't know. Maybe it's just late and it's feeling weird. Look to left of first row of her back stitch. That's where she said she's going to cut. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to cut right, right here. So I'm, I'm going to stitch two more lines on the other side so it's here and here and then that the um the row that's right up in the middle i'm gonna i'm gonna go so it'll be the same distance apart from these so it'll be it'll be red line red line cut red line red line so this is going to be definitely a tomorrow project too but uh, i think we'll get we'll get somewhere tonight i think maybe i'll just I mean, I guess I've been yammering, but maybe we can still, we have 15 minutes yet. Maybe I can still get to the top here. If I'm close, I'll just keep going until I'm all the way at the top. But yeah, never heard of this before. Uh, learned, uh, learned this term uh, two or three days ago, steak. Okay, so that's the question. I know some of you guys know what, what that is already. 
is what I'm doing steaking or am I making a steak? <laughs> I guess I'm not quite sure. I'm in my head. I'm 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 doing the verb of steaking. Like in my head, I'm steaking this sweater to turn it into a cardigan. Is that is that correct? Okay, Laura, uh, Laura says steak is a verb. Okay, <laughs> that's what feels feels right to me. Uh, so. Anyway, like I said, I just learned about this. It is, it's a, like a, it's a couple months of learning. Like I've been doing the tatting and just learning how to tat and now learning a new word that we're actually implementing right away, uh, steaking. And, uh, and that's the deal. Nope, I am gonna go into the cable because the cable is, so Kimberly is saying, wait, uh, you're going to cut through the cable section. I thought you were going to cut up the little two stitch rib, which would have been ideal. Um, no, I am not going up this little two stitch rib here, which theoretically would uh, um, be totally ideal. That's that's how it should have, should be done. Um, Sticking. I am going up the cable just because the cable is the center, and I wanted to go up the center. So this is 100% not ideal for sticking. I, I totally understand that. <laughs> so that's why this may or may not be a disaster. Um, Steaking you want to do on just like that simple, easy surface. But yes, yeah, so I am I am going up the center of this cable. Uh, this cable is actually, it's, it's repeated here and here, so it's not like I'm totally losing the essence of this really cool cable. Um, I am... I, I do have it on either side here, so I don't, I don't feel like I'm losing it. But yeah, if this was the only one of these cables, then I might have chosen to do like some offset thing or something. I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Linda says I should, I forgot, I forgot to change my nail polish to bright red. I know sometimes I, I, that's always, this is almost never on purpose, uh, but, but a lot of times I end up having nail polish the same color as, <laughs> as the project we're working on. This kind of gold has been, um, you know, I, I got that, that nail polish, um, what is it, that, that rejuvenator or whatever, that stuff to like, that those drops to put in it, because, you know, they're just getting old and goopy and they shouldn't already. So I got some of those, but I haven't even tried it yet because when I bought that, I bought, um, a couple new colors of nail polish too <laughs> for fun season. So I've just been kind of wearing this gold, this new color versus fixing the colors that I had. <laughs> but I do have to do that soon here, I think. So, okay, so Nolene is saying, okay, so I would machine in that rib in the cream thread, you won't see it, and it will make it more secure. So if I'm cutting here, you're saying machine stitch in here just to have like an extra security. Yeah, we could probably do that. Just thinking to myself. <laughs> Sometimes when I get in the think zone, all all motion stops. So if I if you find me just like standing next to a wall, <laughs> I'm like just deep in thought. That's what happened just there. So in my head, I was thinking, I wonder if I can cut it first, since it'll be held in enough probably for at least a moment with these red stitches, and then it'll be a whole lot easier to sew like an edge here when I don't have to deal with like this whole sweater being in tube form still. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe that. <laughs> I'm scaring, I'm scaring Kimberly by this idea of just hand stitching it and cutting down the middle. All right, I, I do like that idea of, of the, the extra machine stitch. So yeah, okay. I'll. I'll do it there, but I do think I still want to try cutting it first. Oh, you could, but it would want to, but you would want to stretch it. Okay, so 
that was a concern for me too with and I mean like right now I think I'm adding tension oh, no it's 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 stretchy still um, but yeah I, I we don't want it like stitching totally um, tight I mean because this is a stretchy fabric and I don't have um, I only have a straight stitch <laughs> <laughs> right now my machines are limited to a straight stitch I don't have like a zigzag um, or anything so I I can't do like anything with a stretch so you okay wouldn't want to stretch it okay so you're saying do it just a straight stitch would you use like maybe a, a larger stitch length or or what do you think do an off-center front uh, I, I don't know. I think we're gonna. So I guess Kimberly's saying do an off center front so you don't have to cut up the cable, please. So, um, I guess I'm wondering what's the concern with that? Like, you think it's just gonna completely unravel or just to, to preserve the idea of the cable? I'm just curious just so I know. Oh, is it about like the time spent on the cable? Well, with with that idea, I'm thinking this has been a sweater that's been sitting around with no one wearing it for, for 20 years. <laughs> so uh, I think the idea of wearing it is going to win over preserving the cable and like I said it is the the design is here and here so it's not like I'm completely deleting deleting the work okay I mean the sweater so when moving it around oh so you would still you would still stitch it before hand so it doesn't stretch as much oh you're okay so don't cut in the cable because there's extra yarn that will unravel because the cable has extra yarn. All right, that makes sense. Erg. Um, longer stitch length, yes, you aren't going to cut the cable. You're cutting in between, right? Okay, so everyone's really, really worried about the cable. So I should maybe not do the cable, huh? Uh, cables are yarn, several stitches held in front of and behind the other stitches. You'll be cutting through more than the equivalent of one row of knitting. Um, but couldn't I just trim it? <laughs> I don't know. So I, I, I get what you guys are saying. So I'm gonna, I may have to reconsider this, but um, luckily I don't have to decide tonight quite yet because this is gonna take the rest of the night. But I see what you're saying. I should just like cut it here is what you're saying. Hmm. That is an option. So when I'm done here, I will try this on. And if it looks like an offset thing would be fine, then fine, we'll offset it. <laughs> but at worst, we can still do the, um, we can still cover it with, um, a bi a, like a, a, a binding tape, a bias tape, and, <laughs> and just cover it all up, I think, would be too. Oh, Justin says, what a cliffhanger, I can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I may have to. May have to change this up a little, it sounds like. All right, so. So the people in the know are scared for me, which um, is making me feel like I should change my plan. <laughs> uh, so, so we are in a good position for that, at least, because I could stitch here and here, and uh, then we'd still have like our two cute rows of stitches and then we would cut down this like little gap. Or would we? Would I, would I have to go way over here? Because this technically, this edge here is like a cable too. So if I cut right here, it would 
be near that cabling as well. So would I have to like skip skip this and then cut here and skip this and then like so should my second and uh, or should my third and fourth one be in this cable here and here and then I'm cutting right down this line here. Oh, Amy's saying ask my mom for her opinion. I'm pretty sure she's never done this before. <laughs> but maybe on the other hand, if I wreck it, you can make some nice throw pillows. No, I'm going to make this. This is going to work. This is going to work as a cardigan somehow. OK, so so just to reiterate, because I think I missed some of the, I don't like no, Aline, I don't know what you're yepping to. Are you yepping to um, I should stitch the other two in in the cable here? And then do I cut down the high part, like the knit looking part right here, or do I do less like do I cut in this gap the like lower like pearl gap and then I do the other two lines in this tall part and this gap here so you're saying in the lower part of the rib so I would go right here so you need to go to the right okay no you're not understanding in between the two cables so like right here so like right in the center of here, let me get real close here. So, so you're saying do two more rows here, and then I cut right here. No, you need to go to the right and sew before that next cable. Go to the right. I think we're talking about a couple different things. Yep, the lower part of the rib. No. Yep, to the knitter's heart attack. <laughs> well, luckily we're not doing it tonight. So I will have a whole other day to figure out what we're talking about. <laughs> At worst, oh, okay, so we got some here. So yes in the cable and yes down the knit stitch. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So. Malia is saying, okay, stitch in the cable and cut in the knit rib. Okay, P. Perna is saying that too. So stitch here and here for like the second two rows and then cut right in, in this like tall, the up knit stitch here. Okay. <laughs> Malia is saying yes to that. So to me that, that feels, that feels kind of right. Okay, so Kimberly is saying yes as well. Cut through either the narrow, um, two stitch raised part or the ditch on the side of that. Okay, I think we'd go right down there. Okay, so to reiterate what, because I know this has been a lot of crazy, so uh, I'm just going to share again here just if anyone else is confused like me. So originally I was going to cut right up the cable because that's right in the center. So I was going to put two red lines on this side, two red lines on this side, and cut up the cable. But the knitters of the group are freaking out and saying, no, <laughs> you, you don't want to cut in the cable because there's a lot of extra yarn. Um, so it's not going to do this nice thing. So ideally, I would instead put my second rows here and here in this cable over to the left here. And then I would um, cut up this center here, which would make the whole thing a little off center. but whatever that might be fine right <laughs> okay let's see let's see what you say that you need to but you need the middle of the sweater yes so it's not going to be in the middle of the sweater because the uh, oh you can see my steak journey on my insta under my name oh i will look that up malia malia says i steaked a color work cardi last winter so again if i would have this is a a piece that my mom made probably 20 years ago and if I knew I was going to do this I would have left that stuck in that stitch still sounds weird when I say it um, I would have I would have done that in the middle here because that's what you want to steek through apparently is just that easy peasy knit not any of this crazy cable work and stuff <laughs> so uh, so we may not be going down the center. So maybe, so I might have to like adapt this a little bit. So, all right, so let's say we are off center now and we are wearing like this kind of funny off center thing. So in that case, I probably need something to, okay, now my design designer brain is um, 
thinking now. So now instead, okay, so yes, like like what you're saying, Malia, um, you're gonna add button bands. Yes, so I wasn't gonna add anything, but now I feel like I probably need to add something to make it obvious, like, hey, duh, I know this isn't down the middle. I did that on purpose. <laughs> so I need some element to exaggerate that idea so when you look at it, you don't think like, is she wearing that weird? Cause why isn't that part in the center, right? So yeah, so maybe I do need like some sort of button to keep it shut where the button is way off center too. So it's like got that whole off center feel. Um, it needs something like that. So, okay. All right. <laughs> this project's getting a little bit bigger. Oops. I think I was looking up and stopped looking at what I was doing here. That stitch is a little goofy, but I think we're, we're fine. Yeah, I'll post, I, I have, uh, I did take a video of me wearing this. Oh, so Malia's saying, usually once you steek, you then pick up stitches and knit button bands. So that's the part I don't, I don't quite understand. I'm not, uh, I, like I read a couple blog posts on this, but I guess pretty quickly. I don't understand how you pick up stitches when you have that raw edge um, from cutting it yet, but. Well, I guess it's time for a little bit more research, but okay, I, I, I get I, I, I get the problem here, I think, and uh, um, that the solution may be to just offset this puppy a little bit. Um, yeah, and then do some sort of frog closure or, or toggle. So I, I don't wanna do buttons all the way up and down because this is already small. This is already the like width of, um, the width of this, is not big enough, especially if I want to like pull over and do buttons. So that's not going to work at all, um, buttons. But the whole idea of like that little frog or toggle thing, like a little, you know, those little ropes on a big button or something, that would possibly work. And that'd actually be kind of cute. I could do it in this red. Um, I could find a, a fun button or, or make one of those frog things. I've never done that before, but that doesn't mean <laughs> we can't figure it out, I suppose. Uh, you have stitches on the other side of the cut stitches. That's why you use rods to go through each row. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not catching each stitch perfectly. I am I'm trying. But yeah. And at worst, I can just... Um, I, I'm, I'm, I have my backup plan still that I can still um, just cover this with a bias, like a binding tape or whatever, and, and sew it shut. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, I am going to at least tonight finish stitching up this row, and uh, tomorrow we'll theoretically stitch in these cables and then I will cut up this row here but we may actually sew with the machine a little bit more uh, to reinforce it again I don't know this this might and then, then if we do like a closure or whatever we'll do um, some button thing and <laughs> Kimberly says, it's going to be great throw pillows. It's going to only be a throw pillow if it's just so hideous with the the um, side, the like the offset opening, or if it's still uncomfortable. It's actually pretty kind of tight in the armpits a little bit too, so I don't know. I don't know how comfortable it's even going to be um, as the cardigan, but I guess that's at worst. At worst, it'll turn into so, some cute throw pillows. <laughs> Uh, we'll get it. But don't have to worry about all the scary bits till tomorrow. Oh, Laura says, I feel bad for her mother and all the time she put into the sweater. I don't think she's going to feel bad at all because 
for all the time put in the sweater. It has been sitting around with no one wearing it, so it's it's not those you know it's gonna honor it more by being able to wear it. Did I, did I tell my mom? Yeah, I mean I didn't tell her exactly what I'm doing that I'm doing this here tonight, but I, I'm she knows that it's a sweater that's kind of. Like in her head, I think it's just like a garbage sweater because it doesn't fit well. Um, so she's not attached as far as like, oh my God, you're gonna cut into it. I don't think she's attached in that way at all to it. It's just been unwearable. So of no use. But yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, she'll be much happier if it's turned into a usable piece. Even if it does just turn into throw pillows, I think she'd be very happy with, with that. And like I said, this is, she knit this like at least 20 years ago. Oh, uh, Lauren, so I am, uh, I am uh, attempting to steek this, <laughs> which is a word I first learned of like two days ago, um, which basically means you cut open the sweater. Um, so in my case, I'm gonna cut open the sweater to turn it into a cardigan. And uh, through a process called steaking, which, like I said, I'm just learning about. And uh, apparently, you don't want to do it in cables. And oh, <laughs> OK, so I just had to check. So my mom is texting me. Oh, OK. <laughs> Here, you guys, I got I got the uh, I got the sweater story. OK, I got to I got to um, open this up. Oh my God, okay, so there's a lot more to this than I thought, so let me just read this. Maybe I should read it silently first. Oh my gosh, it's long, okay. Hold on. Oh my God. <laughs> Hold on. I know, I'm just doing this. You were giving me way too much credit. I forgot I gave it to you. Oh, okay. So, all right, so here's, here's the story of this. Okay, so he, this is my mom just texted me. Okay, so here's the sweater story, she says. It's over 50 years old. I got it as a Christmas gift in high school from a boyfriend whose mom, as you can see, was an amazing knitter. So my mom did not knit this. <laughs> this is an old boyfriend's mom's work. <laughs> okay, that makes this so much funnier. Um, okay, okay, Christmas gift as, in high school from a boyfriend whose mom, as you can see, was an amazing knitter. I could never have done something this intricately good. It was made to fit a high school girl and it did not quite well, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's designed as a fisherman's knit sweater with a boat neck intended to be warm. Oh, worn with a turtleneck. Oh, well that makes sense. That's why it's such a like big funny neckline. Um, it was very warm. She's the one who taught me to knit. Oh, that's cool. And we even co-taught an adult beginning knitting class, although I was more of an assistant than a teacher. You were giving me way too much credit. I had forgotten I gave it to you. She also knit me a really cute multicolored skirt with red suspenders, and I don't know what I did with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there, there's the sweater story. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, the sweater is so much funnier now. <laughs> so this is 50 years old and my mom, my mom's boyfriend's mom made it for her. <laughs> so Amy's, Amy says, ah, now it's not so sentimental. Oh God. <laughs> uh, that's crazy funny. <laughs> okay, so mom's like, I didn't knit that, that's too good. <laughs> Forgot about that sweater. Okay, so d now thinking of, of it on like a little like high school girl, like, like a young high school girl, it would almost be more dress-like, but not quite. Like it is kind of long <laughs> and it is skinny. So it is for someone skinnier uh, than me. 
Gina says, man, she must have really liked your mom. Or she was desperate to find her son a wife. Oh, my God. Or she just had busy hands and had a sweater. <laughs> uh, like, my phone keeps blowing up. I wonder if that's mom, because <laughs> we're talking about her. And uh, sure enough. Oh, that's funny. Kimberly says, I just keep going back on how long it took to knit. Well, now we're actually honoring it by turning it into something because it was just sitting around. Like, mom wasn't using it to the point that she gave it to me. <laughs> and uh, she forgot about it. <laughs> so I think we're, we're honoring it by touching it and uh, doing something with it and letting it breathe again. Um, so... I am not attached to the to it being perfectly um, as is how it is now. <laughs> no, Aline says I hope the ones I knitted when I was 22 for my ex-boyfriend didn't end up cut up. Hey, this is not getting cut up. It's getting the, to be uh, honored and worn. <laughs> uh, Crafty Jam is asking what I'm actually doing now. So. Apparently I may or may not be doing this right, but I am uh, um, in the process of steaking it, which means I will be cutting down. So what I'm doing now is basically kind of holding this knitting together with, with stitches. So I will be stitching a couple lines of back stitches on this side, and then I'll be doing a couple lines of back stitches on that side, which hopefully will secure it enough that when I cut, it won't all fall apart. Um, but at that point, um, I may be finishing the edge somehow. <laughs> this is this is a, this is an in progress situation happening. <laughs> uh, I just learned about this process like two days ago, and I've been wanting this. This sweater has been on my list of projects of me wanting to turn it into a cardigan because it doesn't fit very well. And I'd love to actually use it. And we're just learning how, <laughs> we just learned like two seconds ago that it's my mom's ex-boyfriend's mom knit it. <laughs> oh boy. So uh, Kimberly's saying, someone contact that mom. I'm sure the mom would be way more happy knowing that it's being used and it will be worn as a sweater again versus it just sitting in a drawer and never ever being used or touched or anything ever again. <laughs> it's not going to goodwill. So there's, there's that. I always find that crazy when you go to a thrift store and you see something like this that you know took um, like thousands of hours for somebody. <laughs> all the all the knitters who have steaked something before are are not happy with me. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm honoring it by by doing this though. I'm letting it live all right we are almost to the top here oh gosh we're way over aren't we <laughs> that's okay few more stitches and I will tuck in these ends right away and then at worst <laughs> I know I've said that a lot tonight but at worst I don't cut this at all and I just have a sweater with two fun little stripes on it. There's that. I could just let it be like that. <laughs> Except for it's not, it doesn't fit well, so it would just go in like a drawer again somewhere and never be used again. Oh man, Fentless is better, better than being cut up and made as mittens, or using it for Chad's bed, duh, Chad the cats. Bed is 
better than making it a minutes. Uh. I'm getting um, the same vibes that I feel people get when they paint over vintage furniture. <laughs> Ah, maybe put tape down both sides to cut down the tape. So I'll, I'll be, um, I think I'll actually be, I'll, I'll do some machine sewing here too, I think. So, so it'll be secured by machine sewing too. That, that seems to be a recommendation for, for the night too. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll do cables or not cables, um, two rows of stitches like this in in this cable here so that, like right on the edge of this cable uh two um two rows like this and then we're going to cut right up the middle oh but i do want to sew so we'll machine sew in the ditch here too just for extra i guess Whew. and then then we'll cut down the middle here so it's going to be it's not going to be centered it's going to be offset here just for the sake of it not being cut in the cable. <laughs> uh, all right, could you take up a collection to buy you a newer machine with a zigzag stitch? So I might actually be able to, oh gosh, if I can fix that other machine to zigzag stitch, I'm gonna have to look around. Yeah, I think I only have machines that, that, um, that straight stitch right now. Oh, dress maker, dressmaker's tape on the inside to sew on. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So maybe I probably have some gross grain um, ribbon somewhere. So we could put that on the back and then sew, um, so like put the gross grain ribbon on the back of both sides and then sew. Really, we could sew the ribbon on this side and this side. So it could, so, and this would end up being just decorative what we're doing now, which is fine. Um, so the gross grain ribbon on both sides, which again would be sewn to it. So that'd be a big security issue taken care of. And then we'd cut, it would still have this little frayed edge, which we could either do something with, but we probably wouldn't have to. Susie so soft is asking, why am I remodeling this sweater? Because it does not fit at all. And it's just really awkward looking. Um, <laughs> we just learned, uh, I thought my mom had knit it and it was like 20 years old uh and mom texted me that it actually is 50 years old and her old boyfriend from high school's mom knit it <laughs> so that is new new to me information uh for the night um and uh and we're doing a process that i had never heard of until uh, a couple days ago called steaking where you take a sweater and uh, or something that's been knit in the round and you cut up you just cut up it so I i'm trying to ultimately my attempt is to turn this sweater into a cardigan uh, because then it would fit so much better because it is just like really narrow Oh, those stitch wheels. Oh yeah, I do have that machine. So that wouldn't do a zigzag because yeah, that, that zig, those um, cams, cause that it doesn't have the zigzag cam. <laughs> it has all the other cams. That could maybe work. I wouldn't have a zigzag, but I'd have like one of those other stitches. But if I, if I do that gross grain ribbon on the back, which I don't know if I have or not, but I don't know, maybe a Joanne's trip is in line for tomorrow afternoon. Um, but if I do that, then I would use a straight stitch, right? I wouldn't need a zigzag stitch. Yeah, I probably have a cam that does a stretch stitch, but do I want to do that? I, or do I want to do just a straight stitch on, on this? Well, anywho, I think we figured out a lot tonight. <laughs> um, I'm going to tuck in this bottom edge, but then we'll call it, call it a night here. Um, <laughs> Oh goodness. This is how you learn stuff though. Yeah, you, you jump in. <laughs> and then then have, have everyone around you be like, nope, that's not how you do it. <laughs> okay. Let's weave in this end. Clearly I will dig into the research tomorrow. I'll look if I have some gross green ribbon available. Yeah, I don't think I want stretch along the seam. You're right, Deborah. So yeah, so I would just do the gross grain ribbon 
with a straight stitch, and it'd probably cover up this, depending on how thick I got it. <laughs> Amy says, I'm heading to bed. Thanks for the palpitations. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, last little stitch here. I'm going to trim this, and uh, um, I'll zoom out again so you guys can, can see it see where we're at with this thing now that we know a little bit more about it all right so i'm gonna get you guys up higher here sorry for the zoom Ooh, but the red is so pretty down it isn't it okay um tick tock people i'm gonna try and lift you guys up a little bit too so you can see it a little bit more there we go so here's the sweater there we are so actually, the offset looks like it's going to be far enough offset that it looks intentional, I think. And actually, I think these red lines are going to help because here, let's just lay, let's just lay. So this is where I'm intending to put the next couple of lines. So if this is wrong, let me know. So I'm going to put like two lines here. So that'll be just like, just like this. Okay, and then I'll probably machine stitch ribbon to the back for extra sturdiness, right? And then, then we will cut up this, this um, line here. And I will be honoring this lovely cable sweater by actually wearing it and it not being garbage. <laughs> so I think, I think that's the plan. Oh, the red back stitch. Oh, is a stretch stitch. Oh, okay, good. Oh, but I mean, like, if I do, if I, um, if I machine stitch down, yeah, okay, so go get, go to Joanne's, get a gross grain ribbon and a toggle. Yeah, I think I'll, um, I might just have to do that tomorrow. Tomorrow might have to be a field trip. Oh my god, you guys, it's gonna be, like, negative 30 degrees out, though, tomorrow. Ugh. We might just do it anyway. <laughs> Although it will take us... It'll probably take us all the whole time. Well, it will for sure, because this took us the whole time. So tomorrow, it'll take us the whole time to stitch this side. So I do have over the weekend. So I'll probably go to Joanne's over the weekend. OK, Noeline says a leather toggle. Oh, that'd be really pretty, like a little leather toggle at the top here. I don't want it anywhere else, because it is, like I said, it is too skinny. Um, Now that I know the story, I should just double check if mom says it's okay for me to cut into this. <laughs> anyway, um, I think it's going to be awesome. I love the idea that I'm using it, that it's this old piece that's actually going to get used. Um, we're just giving it a new life, and the new life is that it's a cardigan. <laughs> All right, you guys. Whew, thanks a lot for uh, joining me again today. This was so much fun. I know it's crazy town, but I am uh, just over the moon that I get to work on this this sweater um, that, like I said, has been sitting around. Um, and I'm excited to use it. I'm excited to be uh, it to be like a working piece again. Uh, so yeah excited. Um, Kimberly's saying, wear the sweater there. It's, I can't wear it like this. It's, it's just too weird. Uh, like it's got like a big, the neck is really big and it's just too skinny on me. I, it, it's not quite right. And no one would see it anyway, because I would have two winter jackets on top of it. It is that cold. It is like negative. It's going to be negative like 35 wind chill uh, tomorrow. <laughs> So this is gonna be the perfect sweater for inside here when it's that cold, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for it though. This is really fun working on this this stuff together with you guys and thank you so much for the tips. I clearly don't know what I'm doing, which is the fun of, for me at least, to like, I get to hang out with you guys and learn new things, um, which is awesome. I love learning new everything with crafting, so. All right, I think tomorrow we'll, we'll stitch those other two rows and then I'll buy all the stuff I need for it over the weekend and we'll come back on Monday uh, after tomorrow and we will wrap this guy up. I think after, after we stitch these other two lines, I don't think it'll take that long after that. <laughs> it was just sewing that ribbon on and then cutting, doing the actual cutting down the middle. That'll be fun. 
Whew. All right, you guys. Thank you again, and I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. We'll get these other two red lines uh, stitched up in here. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Good night.